rise so that we pray. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you, Father, for yet another day that you've made, and we thank you for the life that you have given us. Thank you for each and everyone who's gathered in this place. And thank you, Lord, for the 10 years that we are celebrating uh, of being a uh, university. We thank you for all the activities that are lined up throughout uh, this week, and this is one of them. And so, dear Father, we pray that as we begin this uh, public lecture, Lord, may you guide and lead, and uh, we thank you for our visitors who come to be with us uh, during this time. So, dear Father, as we commence this activity, we commit everything that's going to take place into your hands. Let your will be done, and uh, we pray that uh, everyone who's going to come should... Uh, May they come here in time so that, Lord, we can all uh, participate in this activity together. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Professor Otieno. Uh, we want to welcome all of us this afternoon session. We had um, some great time in the morning uh, with the experience of our uh, keynote um, speaker from uh, West Africa. And this afternoon we have uh, a team from uh, Live University in USA. Um, so later in the day, um, we'll be able to have some time to interact with them through some questions. And um, I think uh, for us to be able to have um, some more time to interact with them, at this time, let me invite the DVC, Pri, uh, to take over from there. Welcome, Prof. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we want just to invite you for this function, um, the public lecture by our friends and colleagues from Life University. Uh, we have been having them uh, since last week, since Saturday. We had a great cross-country event uh, where Professor Gohole broke the record, the first professor to finish a race in the University of Eldoret, eight kilometers. <laughs> So eight kilometers, uh, I'm, uh, I'm the one on the stage, Professor Chuodo. <laughs> I know you're the chair of professors, but if one of your members has distinguished, okay, let me put it like this, a lady professor to finish first, because Chuodo also came behind her, just close. <laughs> yeah, colleagues, it was a very nice day on, on Saturday. We are, if you didn't come, you really missed it, and we are going to do it on, on an annual basis, and next year, please don't miss that. Uh, for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not, I don't have much to say, but uh, we have our colleagues again from Life University, so that, I mean, who are going to, they have a lot for us, because they are our newest partners, that we uh, have signed an MOU with, and uh, the MOU we signed is far much more than the other MOUs that we have, which is going to involve so many things, uh, sports sciences in it, and other several things that we are going to do together with them. And because of that, we would like to give them ample time, and uh, because of that, again, I'll not say much, but to straight ahead go and invite our vice chancellor to give us um, an introductory remarks and an address, and maybe to declare this um, public lecture officially open. Um, after that, we will be guided on where to go by our master of ceremony. So, Karibu, Madam VC. Please, can you encourage the VC by clapping until she reaches here, please? <laughs> Just continue clapping, please. Just continue. Uh, she's climbing the stairs. Just continue. All right. All right. Just continue. Uh, 
Thank you very much. You've made my afternoon. Feels like it's a political rally, but it's not. <laughs> now, I uh, will start by appreciating our guests, Dr. John and Dr. Hussein from Life University, USA. I also want to appreciate the members of management who are here, who are with you in the, this morning uh, during the conference, the members of the community, the university community who are here, distinguished guests, my dear students, I'm sure some of them are here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, I want to welcome all of you to this public lecture led by these distinguished scholars, Dr. John and Dr. Hussein from Life University. When Life University was introduced to me, I asked myself, what is this Life University all about? And I went and proudly told the chancellor, we have just signed an MOU with the Life University. And she challenged me, what is this Life University all about? But I want to thank the team. Today they are going to demystify what the university is all about. And I'll mention briefly on the issues that we'll be collaborating with. And this is a collaboration, as we were told in the morning, collaborations, networks, linkages are very important as far as a university's life is concerned. And the setup of our engagement with Life University, we intend to partner together so as to provide cooperation on areas of sustainable and productive academic collaboration and exchange between faculty, researchers, and students. We want to develop educational programs in the field of sports health science, coaching, and physiotherapy. In fact, on Saturday I was told one of the programs is almost ready. And I encourage the team to work to burn the midnight oil to make sure that that program is approved by the Senate before my term ends. That will be one of my achievements. Thank you. Then we w the, the university has got a, a wide experience and expertise in the field of health and wellness. And we also, as a university, want to develop that expertise. And we will get that from the team. In celebrating our 10 years of existence since the, the award of charter, we are humbled by the milestones we have achieved and we are thankful for the support we have received or we have been accorded by Life University. And we promise we'll make a delegation to go and visit them because to consolidate these partnerships, you need to visit each other to know each other very well so that you can see which areas are very important. It is evident that for over four decades, Life University has been at the forefront of advancing knowledge and innovation in chiropractic and holistic health. I might forget Professor Somme, one time we were in a meeting, he called me aside and told me about Life University. And I couldn't pronounce this word chiropractic before the chancellor. But today I've done it before you. Isn't it? I've tried. <laughs> An experience that we are ready to tap on as we open this new chapter in the history of our university. The rich tradition of excellence in sports and athletics program, which has produced a number of top performing students, athletes, who have gone on to excel in their respective fields is what we intend to emulate as a center of excellence. As a university, we have a master plan 
which we intend to achieve in the coming years. Sports medicine and sports science, which is a major field that Life University has emphasized upon, is something that we would like your institution to mentor us as we target to nurture the athletes within the home of champions that is in Wasinigishu and the source of champions that is in Andy County. For posterity and positive transition of these talents within the region and beyond. And I'm sure on Saturday we saw some of these talents. Through this partnership, I believe we are destined for greatness. In addition, your institution's remarkable progress in advancing holistic health practices through the Center for Health and Optimum Performance. You call it CHOP. I've done a bit of research on, on your institution. Sorry if, I'm talk, if, if it's not coming out properly, but I'm sure we will clarify it later. This center offers a range of integrative health services that promote wellness and prevent disease. This will offer enough room for benchmarking for our faculty members and students when we shall start rolling out our curriculum through the School of Health Science. Further, your chiropractic program, which is one of the most comprehensive in the world, will provide students in our university with a rigorous academic and clinical experience that will prepare them for a successful and tremendous um, career in uh, athletics. At the university, we believe in, far and f in partnerships. Partnerships and collaborations are critical. We were told this morning by the, the lead speaker are critical and I will not tire from repeating that. We have quite a number, but we still welcome more partners on board to ensure that the university achieves its objectives. All in all, going by the spirit of UOE at 10 celebration, today's public lecture on Life University as a leading Vitalistic Institute for Health and Wellness shall offer us with the needed insight in understanding the standing, in understanding life university and how scholars, researchers, and partners can benefit from the wide variety of services and products offered by the esteemed university. In conclusion, and I'll not stop doing this. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to, university, to Life University for partnering with us in this no noble endeavor. I would also like to thank our staff and students for their unwavering commitment to the advancing knowledge and creating a positive impact in society. With those many, many remarks, uh, I want to pass the regards from Professor Some. I've just talked to him this afternoon, to you, the Life University team, and he wishes that he was here to participate, but he's engaged in a presidential assignment. Uh, may I declare this public lecture open? <laughs> what next? Thank you, Madam Visi, for that insightful uh, address uh, about Life University. You also told us there's something called hope in that university. And uh, this afternoon, this team has, has come with them a very special bed. I'm sure they'll tell us what it does <laughs> at some point. So at this time, and, um, there are more details about our guests, and uh, I want to invite uh, Professor Ochiodo, to introduce for us the guests. Welcome, Prof. Thank you. 
our VC and our guests, and, uh, the university management that are here, I want to take this opportunity to also welcome all of us here for this lecture. But before I say something about the visitors, Madam VC, you'll allow me to say one extra thing. In uh, the Directorate of Resource Mobilization that I also work in, we have tried to stress to our colleagues and members of staff that resource mobilization is relational. Today we are here because of one of us, a young man who maybe a good number of us may not know. He's called Silas. Silas, can you stand up? I think sometimes it is good to recognize people for what they are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Silas. Silas went to school in the US at Life University. And he left an image there that has followed him here. I think it is a challenge to all of us. We have gone to school outside. Uh, I wish we could all bring those institutions here. I know that Madam Vici has brought University of West Australia, New South Wales, New South Wales here for collaboration. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. So I'm just urging that the rest of us, if we could just do that, we can have a lot of collaboration here and resource mobilization would be easier because as I've said, resource mobilization is relational. I went to the University of KwaZulu-Natal and they are one of the people we have signed MOU with. So, how about you? Please let us do something. That is what I wanted to mention before I welcome our guests. Colleagues, we have guests here who are going to speak to us. Um, they have decided that both of them are going to speak. So the first to speak and then he will hand over to the next one, is Dr. John Downs. John Downs is the Vice President for Global Initiatives at Life University in Atlanta. Part of his responsibilities is to handle international affairs for Life University. So he handles most of the international collaborations his area of specialization or interest is the role of chiropractic in sports performance. We sometimes confuse and start saying chiropractic, but it is chiropractic. Maybe they will come and explain that further. Now, that is the brief introduction that I have for him, but before he comes, let me introduce the next one that will follow him, Dr. Hussein. Elsa Gak. Elsa Gak is from North Africa, but he has lived most of his life at Life University because he went to school there also. He's a graduate from Al Azhar University in Cairo of medicine. He's a doctor of chiropractic degree from Life University, which he obtained in 1989. He has been a departmental head of clinical proficiency. Also, he has been a full-time teacher in the faculty of clinical sciences. He is also a director at Life University, handling global initiatives for Europe, Eastern Mediterranean, and Africa. And maybe that's why he accompanied Dr. Jones. Um, he has participated in global education and patient care conferences in Europe. And 
he has delivered several uh, talks and lectures in this area. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together as we welcome Dr. Jones. I thought you were advised to clap until he... <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Ribeiro, he kind of stole my thunder because my concern was for all of you to understand <clears throat> kind of a basic circle of life that were it not for Salem Masoi, we wouldn't be here today because we wouldn't know anything about the City of Champions other than just historically it's there. But Salem came in the 90s as a student got his degree, set multiple records that, and I checked with him this morning because he was inducted into our uh, Hall of Fame in sport. And only one of his records has been broken in 30 years. So he represented your area very, very well. And in that, <clears throat> he found this idea this concept that he had to experience, he was put through called chiropractic care while he was there as an athlete and saw the value of that. So what my job is, in brief, is to build sustainable partnerships for healthcare and education around the world. That's kind of the thing that I've been charged with. And in the three areas that we're currently operating, I have separate directors. There's one director in Central America working in Costa Rica. We have a director with a, a number of people of staff in mainland China. And now Dr. El Senjak is the director for this area. And so he's not along for the ride. I'm along for the ride. <laughs> because over time, he's going to be the driving force in this process. And the thing that I want you to understand is when you see Life University and you see the the line under it, it's in you. What we focus on at life is we believe every person, every student, every adult, everyone in the world has an ultimate potential inside of them. And if we can remove the interference from that potential, they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. And we get the same feeling in our conversations with the University of Eldred, that we're a challenging young people and older people, find your potential, live it to the fullest, because that's really how life works. So for me, that's just a real brief overview. And what I'm going to do is turn it over to Dr. Hussein El Sanjak. He will answer all of your questions, no problem. Dr. El Sanjak. <laughs> Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm grateful to be here and I'm humbled and honored to be here. Uh, there's a lot of friendly people, uh, dedicated people, people that are real, they want to achieve something. And uh, the reason I'm standing here is I lived my life at Life University. I left Cairo when I was 29 years old. I went to Life and I've been there since. Uh, Graduated as a doctor of chiropractic, practiced chiropractic in the U.S., spent a couple of years in England, but back to Life University. So among probably over 35 years, 33, I'm at Life University. That's why Dr. Down says he can answer any question about the university. And I think one of the part that I want to do today is going to walk you with me to Life University. So... Aside from the demonstration that we'll have after the 12 or 15 minute presentation about what Life University, from my point of view, uh, then we're going to enjoy the demonstration that will be followed. So let's go ahead and start. 1974. Okay. In 
1974, Life University began, and I noticed that last week. I said, wow, wait a minute, we go into Eldred for the 10th, and next year is our 50th. So let's do something. So we hope to prepare something good for both of us since we came to your 10th year anniversary, and we turning 50 next year. Maybe we can do something together within that context. Uh, the hands that you see here, The hands are the founder's hand, Dr. Sidwell. It's a symbol that our delivery, our service is done by hand. We don't use drugs, we don't use surgery. We have no problem with drugs or surgery. We are so grateful it's there, but we also have developed techniques to take care of one of the most neglected, important organ in the human body, which is the spine. Natural way with specialized techniques to take care of the spine, look at the spine, and deliver the proper care for the spine through almost 130 years of development and recognition. Also, we know that spinal manipulation been there since day one, many thousands of years. But in the last 130 years, they start researching it, identifying, developing methods and techniques to identify mechanics of the spine, movement in the spine, and how the spine relate to the body and to the health. So moving on, Mission of Life University is to maximize the perfection within. Everybody have a perfection within. As Dr. Down say, it's in you. We need to find it. And I, I would assure whoever goes to Life University, it's a beautiful journey and you grow in it, and you meet a lot of people that are like-minded, they all believe in health, human empowerment, and patient empowerment. So, moving on. The word vitalism is something you know about, you live, but it's now been framed. You know, sometimes you say, what is that word? Oh, I've been doing that all my life. So the word vitalism simply means that we believe, and a lot of people believe, the majority of people believe, that the human body is intelligent. The human body is capable of adapting and remodeling and adjusting itself to the environment and to whatever comes in. The body have incredible intelligence to deal with the outside world, provided there's no interference. And that's the word vitalism, able to heal, able to grow, able to adjust, and able to adapt. Okay, these are our names, so we move on. So what is Life University as a leading institution? We are the largest single campus of chiropractic in the world. We have 1,800 students under the chiropractic program, and we have another 1,000 students in the other 14 or 15 disciplines that we offer business degrees, master's degrees, including, of course, the sports health sciences. Okay, moving on. These are a list of the degrees that's offered, just in case you say, I like chiropractic, sounds good, but I would like to go to life to learn nutrition, or psychology, or business, or computer, or whatever. As has been indicated, we are all in with Eldred University, which means we are not going to confine to one project. We will have multiple projects, and we will grow together, allow a win-win situation for life, Eldred, and students here in Kenya and in the U.S. So the doctor of Capric. Now let's go on campus. I am from Cairo, so I haven't seen snow. Have you seen snow? <laughs> have you? You did? You, you went to Boston, that's why, right? So I remember my first uh, two months, I started in October, and then two months later, this lake was frozen. And I was walking with a friend of mine, and I stopped, it's like, because I always know about the Nile, the Nile constantly flow, it never really freezes. So I looked, it's like, what? So this is a part of life, you know, we have 100 acres of a beautiful campus, uh, and uh, this is a part of it. So this is also a part of, the, of that campus, not far from what you saw before. And this area was a parking lot full of cars. 
because we believe in environment, we signed a deal that we are 100% committed to green energy. The parking lot was gone. To just to send a message that if we can use less cars, commute much better, we can do that. And that changed into this beautiful park that you see here as a part of our commitment. Moving on. The, the couple of, of big question in healthcare is, do we have access to care and do, and what's the cost of that care? This is a difficult one for me to say here because I know for a fact that chiropractic is a very valuable tool, but also there's a very painful fact that I'm struggling with for many, many years, is there are no proper chiropractic educational programs in almost the entire area of Africa, except South Africa, they do have two programs, but 55 countries in Africa, not one single program that is accredited. Granted, spinal manipulation is there, it's very useful and it's very helpful and it's done under orthopedics and physical therapy and it's, it, it brings great results. But the chiropractic program also is a highly refined skilled program that is the entire focus on multiple varieties of technique to take care of whatever patient we have. Younger patient, older patient, athlete, overweight, pregnant moms. We have so many techniques in the chiropractic program that allow the graduate to serve. However, I have a feeling that we're gonna change that painful fact that I mentioned with the help of our collaboration with Eldred University. And I would like to also to use the analogy of a marathon, because it's not a 100 meter run, or a 400 meter run, it's a marathon, which means four years, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, full chiropractic accreditation through Eldred University, sponsored, supported by Life University. That's Concurrently, Sila and Missouri have the same dream. Am I right? Yeah. Right. So even though we haven't really talked much at Life University, I admire him as a person, one of our champions, but I didn't have a close contact because he was under care on the sports and I was running into the education part. But I know him very well as an individual and he had the exact same dream. And I ran into a couple of other Kenyan colleagues, they have the exact same dream. But the dream will never happen unless we have a credible, powerful, compassionate university like Eldred. And that's why we're so thankful to be here because it's a little bit more than collaboration. You're actually fulfilling a dream of many, many people and they are all in whatever is need to be done. So moving on. Thank you. Question. That the answer is obvious. Can low risk, low cost healthcare practice applied regularly prevent problems in the future? The answer is yes. So, health literacy is key, and that is what also the core of the chiropractor. Not only have a mastery of spinal health problem, but he takes care of the patient as a whole the nutritional part, the exercise part, the mental, the physical part. So, we move on. World Health Organization defined health, and you've probably seen that 500 times, as complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity, which is good. Now we move into Life University expanded definition of health. Exact same thing, physical. The mental part, we move it into emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and social, as well as environmental. So we look at everything pertaining to that in a cycle of health when we are dealing with the patient. Of course, the philosophy drive our education, and that is why we have the campus living. If you come to Life University, we'll take a couple of pictures to the campus if we move on. This picture is better than a thousand words, probably one of the best pictures that I can tell you of what is health to you. It's not only chiropractic. We can deliver the best chiropractic care you'll have. But we also have to emphasize all the other interference with the nervous system and expression of health. 
which is physical, mental, spiritual, intellectual, and environment. We created a uh, the eatery or the cafeteria for the students, making sure everything is grown locally, everything as organic as possible, and we have a up-to-date information about nutrition, dietetics, they oversee the process and make sure the students have the best, healthiest meals they have because they spend a lot of time on campus. Uh, starting seven o'clock in the morning, by the way, we start seven in America and sometimes we finish seven at night, but usually seven to five, maybe eight to five, if you're lucky, nine to five. <laughs> All right, uh, we build also housing for the student observing all the gold standard for efficiency as far as energy consumption and reservation. So we have what is known as a gold lead certified campus that our campus is built up to 100% healthy standard with energy efficiency and carbon dioxide emission. And these are a couple of buildings and we have built many more buildings like that for our athletes and center. We just didn't want to overwhelm you and I'm gonna leave the, uh, the little surprise for our guests uh, that are coming to visit us hopefully soon. And it will be many, many guests and students hopefully coming to visit and be at Life University in the future. This is the cafeteria again. A getting active, yeah, let's move on. I don't wanna take the whole thing, all right. Getting active and wellness center, so let's move on to the next slide. The available and that, that's wellness center have a class, I was having lunch today with Sila and I hear like music and people dancing and I was like, this is pretty good. He says, yeah, well, this is, a, uh, and I used to like the dancing classes and, the, and the exercise classes, even the senior classes. So we have classes on campus that is for seniors and for the students. We have a beautiful gymnasium up to the, everything is, is upgraded to the best equipment you can have, but this is just a part of it. Of course, environmental is important, and we, we did a whole a lot of things, including courses in ecology and conservation, and, and, and we hope to kind of get into the forestry and the part of, of uh, education part that can marry that part from Life University. But we did sign a, uh, the uh, Clean uh, Air Act, that was 2011. And if you go back one, one, no, just go back, yeah. Okay. See, the tobacco free campus was 2008. I stopped smoking 2009. <laughs> so I smoked a little bit, you know, when you're a young athlete, like you feel like, you know, you can sprint and run. I was a footballer and I was trained. And so, but after finishing football and moving into, I start saying, okay, well, maybe have a puff of cigarette, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of that. Next thing you know, you know, you get the Marlboro light in your pocket and it became like a part of you. And it's like, this is not a good thing. It's like, I can quit anytime I want to. And you, you can do that for a long time, saying that to yourself. And then one day, I, uh, all forces worked against me. My wife, any time I smoke a circuit, I have to step outside, and if it's cold, I'm like, like a homeless guy smoking. Uh, then, my local sports bar that I watch games and everything, Newcastle United or Manchester United, she came and it's like, you can't smoke in a bar. What do you mean? So now I can't smoke at home, I can't smoke in a bar, I can't smoke at school, I live at school. So I decided, you know something? I'm gonna stop smoking at least for one day and see what happened. Maybe my head will fall off, whatever. I stopped smoking for a day, two, three, four, five, six. How many years now? It's been 2009. August 18 was my last cigarette. And I did not come anywhere near it since. So this has nothing to do with the presentation. It's just a personal part of me. Saying that, that yes, sometimes I needed help to stop smoking and the help came from everywhere because Life University decided before that that would be no smoking on campus. Okay, moving on. These are our campus again, multiple pictures. 
social part of life university that I love because I love to eat and I like music every quarter, four times a year, we invite the new students and our students at large to come have lunch and listen to music and the president will be there and we, on Thursday from 11 to 1, there's, not a whole, there's no classes then, it's just an event to welcome. So the student, young student meet with the older student and senior and we mingle, we talk. It's a beautiful place and it's a beautiful event. Uh, one of many, many social events that Life University embraces. We also have a, se a, a senior program, outreach, uh, the Shillong uh, Project and the Global Initiative. The Global Initiative brought us here today. So I'm not gonna talk about it, we will show it. But I'm gonna just mention a drop of the Chilon project, if you go back, the Chilon project, yeah. We live in Atlanta, Georgia. Life University is in Marietta. Marietta is a little bit off Atlanta, so it's a much better city than the city of Atlanta. City of Atlanta have its big city problem, like everywhere. So it's really a nice area to live in in Marietta. However, we decided the people that can make mistakes and get incarcerated and go to jail Life University made an agreement with the jail uh, department or incarceration department to offer degrees to inmates, to get them educated. So when they graduate, they have less tendency to go back, try to make a living where they don't have a degree and ultimately go back. So Life University did embark on that program three years ago. I was so happy to learn about it. Even though I'm not directly involved in it, it just shows you the character of Life University. We invested a good bit of money, effort, and personnel to represent ourselves in there. And we have graduated several cohorts from the inmate, and that decreases the tendency for a person who spent two years in jail or three years to come back because through these years, he got a, a bachelor's degree in business or computer or nutrition. And we had a little problem with the guards because the guard says, wait a minute, we are guards. These are in me. How come they're getting free education? So Life University decided, you know something? Everybody in, within the guards or whatever would like to get educated, they can also enroll at Life University free of charge as a pledge of good faith. All right, so moving on. I think I'm done. All right, senior program. Next. This is one of the good friends of mine. We work out together, Marilyn. That's the Shillon project that I explained to you. And this is the chiropractic care. So what is chiropractic? I started as a medical doctor, practiced medicine for four years. After four years, I want to choose specialty in medicine. At the time, I was not 100% sure. Do I want to be an, uh, a cardiac specialist, dermatologist, hepatologist, nephrologist, gastroenterologist? There's 100 branch in medicine, over 100 branch. So I wasn't sure. So I'm asking a lot of people, what would it take? What kind of income, what kind of commitment, hours? So I'm trying to make that decision when I learned about chiropractic. So few chiropractors came to Cairo and they explained that the chiropractic profession is a profession that deals with the relationship of the nervous system to the body and how the nervous system control and coordinate the human body and how the spine houses the nervous system. So the chiropractic profession is looking at the spine for the first time as an organ. They studied the movement of the spine, the relation of the spine to the body, and they developed methods and techniques that they can correct this area that have misalignment by hand, without the use of drugs, without the use of surgery, without anesthesia. The process of correction is entirely painless and is done in an outpatient setting. So let's run a couple of slides. And here's what you see. This is an instrument technique. This is a specialized table. This is a straight up. So there's about at least maybe 10 or 15 core techniques. And there's another probably over 50 subsidiary of the techniques to take care of the patient. All right, I think we have that definition already. So if you look at that picture, here it is. See your spine, control all your part. If you give me a click back or one click forward, one click forward, all right, go back again, sorry about that, and give me a click back, all right, one forward, you see that spine? Yeah, and at relate, so 
We study the spine, we identify, we have methods to identify areas with x-ray, exam, palpation, techniques, muscle testing, uh, uh, radiography, to identify where is the patient need care to release the interference. And we deliver the adjustment and most of the people under chiropractic care improve significantly. But to reach this area, you have to know everything about the body. So if you are in a chiropractic program, you will take exact same discipline as medicine. You will take anatomy, physiology, radiology, pathology, diagnosis, same textbook, <coughs> identical boards. If you take an anatomy course, your professor is a PhD anatomist. If you take a pathology course, your professor is a PhD pathologist or MD pathologist. The only thing is not covered in a chiropractic college pertaining to the medical school is <coughs> pharmacology and surgery, which we're so glad that they exist when they are needed. It's being replaced in a chiropractic curriculum by chiropractic methods, technique, analysis, and patient care. So this is in a nutshell. I don't know it's a nutshell, it's about half hour. Did I go over? How's my time? Can I have two more minutes? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to say, naturally, first, pharmacy, second, surgery, last, every profession have its place. And that is why the student, the graduate from accredited college, they call themselves primary chiropractic care. That means that chiropractor that graduated from an accredited university can see a patient, examine the patient, and determine the patient does not belong in a chiropractor's office. He had an aneurysm or he had a problem. We need immediately to refer him to the proper medical doctors that surpass his need for chiropractic care. Then we can worry about the chiropractic care later. So our student educated to identify health-related issue that make the patient refer some other places prior to chiropractic care. A lot of them sometimes they come up with neck pain, low back pain, whatever, and they are perfectly healthy. Otherwise, we can initiate care right away. Okay, moving on. Uh, chiropractic have more focused college in the U.S. That is probably the most accredited college. 17 of them. Life is by far the biggest one, and everybody want to come to life. Uh, and uh, in England, there's maybe two colleges. In Sweden, they try to build a college. In, in the whole Europe, there may be seven or eight chiropractic colleges. There's so many countries in Europe don't have chiropractic here, like Italy, for example, Germany, believe it or not, uh, Portugal. Spain have one or two. And then Eastern Europe, none. Asia start developing programs. Africa, zero. Middle East, Arab nation, zero. South Africa have two. The word is accredited. Accredited means it is a curriculum very similar, if not identical, to medical curriculum with 30% of the content entirely chiropractic skill and discipline. That's the part that we do. Okay, so I think I am done because give me three more slides and I will, yeah. Our challenges, of course, public awareness, that's why we're here, we need to educate the public, global initiative, integration, accreditation, funding. We are a private institution, so our income comes for our students. We are blessed that there's so many students are also blessed with their families are blessed. So they come in and they pay good money to get educated. But we also have many, many outreach clinics and outreach that we can offer many, many scholarships and many, many health aid. Many, many people can sponsor individual or whatever. So there's always ways to kind of a get educated at the highest level considering and being sensitive to the cost and the economy. Partnering with, uh, with Eldred University will solve a great deal of that problem. Also, the online work will solve a great deal of that problem. All right, moving on. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Conclusion of <laughs> Life University. Right now, the next step is was a little surprise to us because we thought tomorrow we'll have the assessment, but 
we're flexible. So right now there is a part which is called assessment because a lot of people say, okay, can you show me what do you do? And I was like, yes, I mean, we usually look at the spine. Uh, how can you look at the spine? There's so many different ways to look at the spine. But Dr. John Downs usually look at the athletes, so, and he can make an assessment. And I had a big conversation with him, telling him that, what is a chiropractic role in athletes? He says, the same chiropractic role anywhere else. I said, exactly my, my thoughts. So if the patient come in, we look at the spine, and we analyze the spine and we identify area on the spine and we correct the subluxation. Of course, the elite athletes can feel if they are 100% or not. And therefore, a lot of athletes are seeking chiropractic care and most of the Olympians, most of the gold medalists have chiropractic. Most, not some, but some of them don't know about it, don't have access to it. We hope to change that. Dr. Downs, would you like to come up and maybe uh, we can partner here and decide how we're going to do the next step? Uh, I, I feel there's a, a disclaimer to be made or something yes. or something. <coughs> so the disclaimer is... <coughs> you couldn't hear me before? Okay. <laughs> no, no, Sorry. You were here. So the disclaimer is that this is a basic assessment that I do on athletes around the world. And it's not all about um, a full exam from, from uh, a point of history, background, all those things. And when I do the assessment, I can show you some of the outcomes of those assessments. But at the same time, I won't be performing full chiropractic services because I really don't have a history, I really don't have a background on the athletes, all those different things. So just so you understand that. And a lot of times when you work with, with world-class athletes that think they have no problem and you start talking about chiropractic, they go, why do I need a chiropractor? And for me, it's like, we'll tell you what, why don't you lay down on the table and let me check your nervous system? Because without your nervous system, you don't go anywhere. And what I love about sport is sport is measured. So when I meet runners from this area, from the city of champions, they will tell me their name, their discipline, and their best time because that's how they measure their performance. And so for me, what I'd like to show you is this. There are two things that I typically do. Um, I'm just gonna do the field test at this point, but it's a very, very easy thing if you wanna try it at home. Stand on one foot for 30 seconds, eyes open and eyes closed, okay? Now, if you are between the ages of 18 and 59, you should be able to stand for 30 seconds with your eyes open on both legs, on either leg. And it's just simply, you stand on one leg, bring the other one up, put your hands on your hips, and you just stand there. Should be no problem. Don't close your eyes by yourself, okay? Have somebody there. But if you close your eyes and the time drops dramatically, that means that your brain is using your vision more than all the rest of the peripheral nervous system to maintain balance. And for those of us that are old, I'm, I'm in my world of research now, I'm having to deal with research that deals with young old and old old. And unfortunately, <clears throat> I'm about to pass the threshold into the old, old category, right? But what it says is that how we move, how our posture works, how our reaction times are all driven in a coordination between the brain and the arms and legs, okay? So what I'd like to do and, and propose to you is
If I could get a couple volunteers, we'll just do them one at a time, to come up, I'll do the assessment, I'll try and explain what I see with it, and if you remember, as Dr. Alsanjic said, the body adapts, right? And here's the simple proposal. If the nervous system isn't balanced side to side, then every time you walk, every time you move, your brain is trying to balance two different signals coming through the body. And over time, our posture changes, our gait changes, and when the body can't adapt anymore, it sends out a signal that we all know as pain. So when you start having pain, that means the body has already extinguished almost all of its adaptation. Unless, of course, you walked across the street and got hit by a taxi or a bus or a car. That, that's a whole different thing. But day-to-day -day activities, no, it's adaptation. So with many, many athletes, and I've, and I've had the privilege to work with gold medalists all over the world, um, not because they like me, but because people have said, we want to see what this chiropractic thing does. And we've taken people that have a whole list of problems of pain, and I said, okay, I'm not here for your pain. I'm here to balance your nervous system. And if we balance your nervous system, now we'll see how your body adapts to it. Okay? Fair enough? So, the, oh, anytime my voice goes like that, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. How, you haven't adjusted Sila for many, many years, have you? No. Okay. So you can see, those of you that can see it, his right leg is not working nearly as efficiently as his left. Now, along with that, what we found is when the left leg is working more efficiently, 
usually the right upper body is working more efficiently. So, I want you to hold that one, Carl, and then you All right, and now bend your elbow and hold it down. And now, we'll do the same thing on this side. If I may, Dr. Downs, and for, for medical doctors and, and people in, in medicine, this is not overpowering the muscle. Right. This is simply seeing if, which muscle locks better. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're not trying to overcome the muscle. You actually see if there's one muscle that is solid and the other one doesn't give that much. That subtleness will get to the experience, but you can see it obviously here. So it's not like about so overpowering. And, and we'll, we'll look at how well he does afterwards. Now, I'm okay adjusting Sila because I remember him from 30 years ago, and we're friends. So I will actually take care of him and try and show you some of the change. But what I want you to see is, Sila, we're asking Sila about his morning runs. And he says, well, I don't run anymore. I just jog. I said, well, how, how far do you jog? Six miles. Okay, well, six miles to me is like You take a, a taxi. Right? You take a taxi. Yeah, I take a taxi at least. But he said, I was training for a marathon. I slipped on some ice and I hurt my knee. And ever since then, my knee has been giving me problems. What I would propose to you is that when his whole right leg is less efficient than his whole right leg, this leg does not have the ability to adapt as well. And the halfway point in the kinetic chain is the knee. So from my point of view, it should be hurting. It should be a problem. Now the question is, how do you remove that interference? Well, here's one of the ways that we'll look at it. Sorry, can I get you to just put your head there? No. By repositioning his head, I've changed the signals of the nervous system. If I come down to his feet, his feet are even. If I have him hold out here, and hold out here, and hold up here, and hold up here, and hold here, and hold here, he's almost equal, just by tipping his head. Now, keep your head there. Remember when he almost rolled off the table? Okay, hold here. Okay, put your head back in the center. Hold here. <laughs> That's the nervous system at work. Now, the longer he lives with this imbalance, the more he's going to have tightness in his low back and tightness between his shoulder blades and tightness into his neck. And over time, if he studies for a PhD and has a lot of work to do, or He's addicted to iPhones or cell phones. People will start getting chronic headaches simply because it's another adaptation. So, are you okay going with this? I'm okay. Okay. So, I'm going to come here. feel anything, did you? No. Okay. So now we come in. Hold here. Hold here. Hold up. Hold here. Hold here. Hold here. Now with Sila, because I really do want his knee to get better, I'm going to do a real quick check on his knee. So I'll get you to turn this one in for me, Sila. Hold in. Okay. Turn your foot in this way and hold in. Oh, you're going to have to. Okay. And then we come here. I'll get you to hold here again for me. Okay. Bend your elbow. Hold down. And hold up. Okay. Now what I'd like you to do, can you get up and just walk around for just a minute without the table? <laughs> okay. The next thing we do with athletes and everybody who has a nervous system 
that comes into my practice. We have them get up and walk. Why? Because the nervous system has to re into space and into gravity. And what we've done, we're doing some research now that with as little as 100 steps, if you do a functional MRI of the brain, you will see the frontal cortex adapting to the new input via the spinocerebellar tract. The feedback from his feet coming up through the kinetic chain is now telling his brain new information. Now we change muscle tone, we start changing things, okay? So, Tim, if you just walk over to Dr. S. I did it in the back. Good job. You did a great job, come on back. No, no, just lay back on your back. And I simply go back through and retest the exact same test. Hold out here, hold here. Hold up here, hold up here, hold here, hold here. I'm just doing this quick, so we're not here all day with silence. Okay? Hold up here. Good. Okay, thank you. So, in a nutshell, what I would end up doing with Lucela is walk for a little while, give your body a chance to adapt. Then I want you to go out and do your same job, same speed, same terrain. And when you get back, come see me. And I want to check you again. I want to check you again. Then what I do, let me do this, okay. You can't hear me back there? Okay. What I will tell them is, your nervous system is now balanced. And the body will start adapting back to balanced rather than imbalanced. And because of the way I checked his knee, I have a very high confidence that in about a week to 10 days, his knee should be very, very good. It may not be perfect because be, he's been running on it and it hasn't been working properly. But that's kind of the basis of, of what we do. And the great thing with, with athletes is because they have a measured performance. There have been times when I've actually adjusted athletes, they go back out on the track and they're concerned because they actually feel like they're overstriding because the brain is now working at a higher level of efficiency that they're not used to, okay? So that's kind of the, the, an assessment with, with an adjustment that I would do for Sela. Yeah. Is that all I would do for him? No, 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 no. I'd look at other parts of his spine and see what else is going on, but that's what I do as a demonstration. So do I have any volunteers that would like to have this exam? If not, it'll make the questions really Easy. Yes, ma'am. I would like also during this pause to ask Dr. Downs a question that I think some of you may have. And the question is, if you go to a chiropractor to get assessed, are all chiropractors going to assess you exactly that way? Absolutely not. Okay. Because... Everyone has their own approach to how do we assess the nervous system. What we've done at LIFE is we've started using this assessment as the baseline for all of our students who are coming through working with athletes. Because we say, we want you to be able to challenge the athlete to perform at a level, and if they can't, they may have no pain at all but they're not performing at their highest level. But you may go to other people, completely different approach. But what we found is, to answer the question with an athlete, why would I need chiropractic care if I have no pain? It's because if there's interference, you're performing less than you possibly could. 
Okay. All right. So. someone, if I do this and I see a difference, I know statistically, because I've done hundreds of athletes with this assessment, they don't know anything about chiropractic, couldn't care who I am, I was in mainland China, didn't even speak the language, they just said, lay down, let this guy do this, 83% of the people that were in their athletic program had an imbalance in the nervous system. Were they still performing? Yes, I, I took care of some gold medals that had major problems. And it's like, okay, you're a gold medalist. Unfortunately, I would argue you're not performing at your highest level, which is very disturbing for a gold medalist to hear, right? So I'm gonna come in here. Now, I'm gonna take this lay down, and I just want you to hold it there, okay? And I'm gonna pull in, okay? So you hold out, I'm pulling in. Just, yeah. Do you understand? We'll see. Okay. So try it again. Hold out here. Okay, so you push out against my hand. No, no. The other one. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. Push out. Push that way. Okay? You ready? Okay, push. It must be my language skills. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So I want you to... Same thing on this side. Okay. I think we have the communication channels right now. <laughs> now, I want you to hold your leg up here. Don't let me push it down. Good. Hold up here. Okay. And one more. I want you to hold here. I'm going to push it down and away. Don't let me do it. Good. And same thing on this side. we got coordinated, again, there's this difference in our body. From a chiropractic point of view, we'd say that indicates nervous system interference, one side versus the other. And we're going to do something to change that. And when we change that, now your body should adapt back in the other direction. Okay? Fair enough? Now, also, there's a high correlation 
between this problem and problems in the math. Not always, but a high correlation. So, if I, no, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do it until I look in the dictionary, because I get that, okay? Good. If I move her head to the side, and her ankles move the same, then I know something in the cervical spine is creating a problem. If I move her head to the other side, and I check, and it's even worse, then I know that if she gets care from somebody who isn't paying attention to the nervous system, they're gonna tend to work on the side of her neck that's the tightest, which will be the right side. And it will actually make the system work less efficiently. So there's a science to this, there's research to it that goes with this whole process. So if I had her head over here, everything's balanced. You ready for this again? Okay, so you resist here, good. And resist here, good. And resist here, and resist here. And resist here. Here's what I want you to think about. If I'm working on a world-class athlete who has no pain, how much do I want to do in working on them? I would propose to you that what we do in sport chiropractic is like fine-tuning a racing car, meaning we do the least amount we need to to balance the nervous system and now let's see how it performs. Sometimes when you go to people, they wanna do everything. They'll put you on your side and your back will pop and your upper back will pop and your neck will pop and all those things. And what I found with athletes, makes them feel good for a split second, but it doesn't really check the nervous system, okay? And so what we would do and what we do at our sport health science area is we get everybody who studies sport health science to understand the nervous system is king. And so goes the nervous system. So goes respiration, digestion, sleep, emotional stability, and physical performance. And so we look at it from a point of view of going, if we can look at the nervous system and find interference, demonstrate it to the athlete, and then show them a way to remove it. What we tend to find is they go out and exercise, they come back, and their body is now adapting back to a more balanced system, and they don't tend to get hurt as often, they don't tend to have as many problems. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, it's just part of the performance process, okay? Do we have any, uh, how are we doing with time and do we need to do anything else and do you want me to pull some? Sure, absolutely. And Dr. Hussein can answer all the questions. <laughs> well, maybe the question is for you, so yeah, if you'd be kind enough to just, just yeah. still be here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we enjoyed this evening and we thank you for your attention. There is more to chiropractic than 20 minute presentation. As I mentioned, it's a, it's a whole process of education. The chiropractic degree, the accredited degree is four years. The students start to learn about the spine from the first quarter, shadow and doctor. So within four years, they know all the relationship of the spine to the nervous system. Uh, so it's a process of growing and like a mastery. Uh, the best analogy I can tell you is a piano and the chiropractor is playing a beautiful symphony.
symphony using that piano. Anybody that's not a pianist can go in there and fiddle with the piano, but you're not going to hear an outcome like somebody who knows exactly where to strike. So having said that, I'd like to invite some questions from the audience, if you have any. And if you didn't, that means we've done a great job. Okay. Well, if you have a question, please. Question. It, it's fairly popular in Europe, but not as much as possible because in Europe there is scarcity for an educational institution. Uh, if I have to name, there's about maybe, as again, three in England, one in France or two in France, none in Italy, none in Germany, none in Portugal, one in Spain, so none in Sweden, one in Denmark. Uh, so there's a lot of European that don't have the, the, the chiropractic care. Same thing in the Middle East. Uh, so who practice in the Middle East? Well, there are 15 people, five from life and 15 from South Africa, they are in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, providing patients and making significant amount of healthy income, because they're the only people that are a primary chiropractor, graduate from an accredited institution. So the investment in the chiropractic career is really amazing. Uh, my younger brother was a surgeon, and he took the same lead. He left surgery, he became a chiropractor. He's probably one of the most successful chiropractor in Cairo. He's a little smarter than me. He decided to go to Cairo and just settle there. And he is in Cairo. People flying from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Bahrain, you name it. His clinic is always busy and he, uh, he's doing very, very well. So it is a great profession. And um, thank you for the question. I think mine was just a follow up of his question. Is this few, is it the fact that you have like relatively few institutions uh, uh, because of the cost involved in setting up uh, chiropractic institutions or, or is it the practice that is slowly uh, catching up? Like what, what's the main reason for the few institutions globally? There are two important reply to that question because that applied to what I had. I had the same question. I said, okay, I am a medical doctor. I already finished all the anatomy and physiology. Now, I want to go to Life University. How many years do I graduate? Can I graduate in three months? They said, no. Six months? No. One year? It cannot be done. It's like, wait a minute. If I finish medical school and I finished, and I, gonna, I wanna learn how to do hysterectomy. I can learn how to do hysterectomy, skin to skin, open close, in less than eight months under an OB-GYN specialist, because I, you know, I, I will do a lot with him, and so why is it that I cannot do it? That's the question that a lot of medical doctors ask, and there's about 35 medical doctors from Russia, India, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, Egypt, Spain came, and the, I had the same conversation, and the conversation goes as such. What is the minimum amount? I reply, because I've been through, I said two and a half years. I made it in three because I fell in love and I got married, so I was taking a little <laughs> slow. Well, but I wasn't really rushing to do it because I know the more I learn, there's more techniques, more tricks. I mean, you can reach so many levels of mastery in, because it's an, there's a big R to it. So you can be good, you can be excellent, you can be great, you can be very unique. So I said two and a half years. All 33 could have done it in two and a half years. None of them choose to. Each one of them said, I think I want to do three. Okay, why? Because I think I need to learn, because I already learned that technique that with the sacrum and the thing with the headache, and now I want to do a little bit with pediatrics, and I think I want to do also scoliosis. So I was like, okay, because remember two years ago you came in and you said, I need to finish two and a half. I said, just, I'm fine with three. I said, okay. Pace yourself, take the class, and graduate. So in essence, there is more to it that could be explained in one shot. And for me, when I graduate, or when I went to, to, to the chiropractic college, 
I have to take something new as full spine one, which is one quarter, and full spine two. You can't take them together because one teaches you where the anatomy, and two, two is teaching you how is the mechanic, and full spine three is how to adjust that patient three different ways. If you ha so there's a sequence of learning, and that sequence will ultimately lead to graduation after four years, and that is why every student, even though they spend four years, they're actually learning a bit about chiropractic from day one on a small scale, all the way to full take care of patient complete as, as they are reaching 13th and 14th quarter, which we call them the peak doctors, that they finish everything and they just need to finish the numbers. Okay? Yeah, thank you for your presentation. I have two questions. Uh, one is on the accredited programs that you mentioned. Are these undergraduate programs or these are done in the medical school after the first degree? Then secondly, for stroke patients, especially those who are paralyzed, does chiropractic uh, uh, benefit them or physiotherapy? Yeah, thank you. spine interfering with the nervous system, there is an ablative lesion in the brain that require either surgery or neurology, neurology or whatever, so we don't really do much in there until the patients maybe recover and then we can take care of them after neuro and PT on a purpose of making sure he's comfortable with his spine because he doesn't need to be suffering from low back pain or anything as such after. So the first question, the, uh, the first question was? So different programs around the world function differently based on their Ministry of Education or their Department of Education. In the U.S., you have to have a four-year undergraduate degree, and then you do your four years of chiropractic. There is a WHO-approved conversion for medical doctors, for licensed personnel, that is estimated to be about 2,000 hours, okay? And again, that is all based on different countries, what their standards are, what their standards for licensure is, and things like that. And, and let me just say another thing about stroke, because uh, chiropractic is developing an area called functional neurology. And after the acute phase of a stroke, when they're in that recovery mode and they're working with physical therapists, we've also found that through testing through the eyes and through auditory system and some other things that we can find areas, chiropractors can identify areas inside the brain that have dysfunctioned because of the stroke. And we are starting to get some research published about that that says it's not the only thing they need, but it may be beneficial to them. I also would like to add something really crucial in the conversation, which is there's something we all know in the world. It's called local reality. Where are we? We are in Kenya. Do they have laws in Kenya? Yes, they do. Do they have regulation? Yes, they do. How about Egypt? Have its own reality. So if you would like to design a program, which I think we are looking and hoping we would, we, are, we shouldn't be dictating, it's like, oh, it's gonna be four years, whatever. What is the local reality that can fit Kenya? What can we do to create a strong program that doesn't have any faults using the WHO rather than four years or be 1800? If a medical doctor wanna be involved, maybe we can expedite them because they already have, we can design a better course for somebody who have a physical therapy degree or a medical degree based on the WHO but the most important thing, that some form of authority from a university or ministry need to understand and provide a provisional licensure that can ultimately al allow that practitioner to practice chiropractic. This is already, this is the, the, the entanglement because it requires too many people 
agreeing on doing something and it require a health minister or a health policy maker, an institution that adapt a program that will give the program credibility. Another university that is globally known, which we already have. So we have all the pieces, we just need to put it together. I would like you to be the head of the program if you want. I have, I have a quick one, two, okay. two quick questions. Number one, is uh, a student who is taking sports science, would they be eligible to take a uh, master's in one of those chiropractic, uh, chiropractic related courses that you showed over there? That's number one. Number two, if I have an interest in maybe practicing a little bit of chiropractic, are there short courses that I could take? The short courses that is offered in chiropractic is not chiropractic courses, it's a technique course. And the difference between a technique course is a successful chiropractor have his own techniques and he's being very, very good with that technique, goes to Germany and set up a workshop for people that have some medical background to learn his technique. And that can be very valuable and helpful to a lot of people. But it's not, we don't consider that a chiropractic technique, it's just a technique that somebody can use to take care of a certain kind of people, limited kind of people. But it will be good enough for him because he said, well, oh yeah, I can move the bones, I can, I can, I can. To create a short course, that's where local reality of the leadership of Eldred and the leadership of Health Ministry of Kenya agree that yes, we can, but if we get Life University or accredited university approval, try to confine very strongly with the WHA guideline using the unfortunate but fortunate events that allow online education to be acceptable. A practicing, chiropr a practicing medical doctor can very well take some courses online, can get some techniques and, and go to his practice to practice it and be a part of the 18 hour. There are ways to create a shorter course of chiropractic that is legitimate. And to do that course, the two universities must approve. That is a co-joint co approved by both of them because we don't want to create an incomplete courses. We always have the, the situation because chiropractic is have a lot of good results, and there are so many, many medical doctors go and take a short course of manipulation and do it, and I can promise you, they are doing well. They are serving a lot of patients, but they don't have the depth of the analyzing as a chiropractor. Not to take anything from their professionalism, but they already have a profession, which is orthopedic and neurology, and they can help some patients if they learn few techniques in chiropractic that is offered, but we do not offer it. We don't offer any short course for somebody to be there. We would like to offer, if we're gonna offer one, we're gonna offer it in a marathon format, which means within two to three years, this place will have so many people coming in because we invested enough time and effort to create a legitimate course. Sorry about the lengthy answer. Sports sciences doesn't have a chiropractic technique in it. So if you are a sports science only, you are really doing some other. Dr. Downs, I think you probably got a better answer. Yeah. You can get a master's and you can take some classes to help you integrate chiropractic into uh, your knowledge base as an exercise physiologist, but not directly learning the textbook. Okay. So as we know, more discussion needs to be done, and, and, and even oh, we're passionate about chiropractic, but we are not here to sell chiropractic. We are here to show who, you, who we are. If you would like to have a program, it's going to be a marathon-style program, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. But we have so many ways to collaborate in many, many different areas that we are ready to invite you to Life University, get the spirit of what we're doing, we have another team coming in next year. I'd like to have 
twice a year visitor from Eldred to life and see him from life to Eldred. So we can really kind of get this collaboration going and, and benefit everybody. Thank Hello, you everybody. Uh, just a quick one, eh? and then we finish that session. A quick one. Yeah, and two quick ones. I enjoyed your presentation that, today yeah. very much. Now, since the spinal cord is uh, your major organ of concern. It's like the Nile. <laughs> what, uh, what, what do you subject uh, someone with a defective uh, spinal cord, for example? They did what? Defective spinal cord. Defective spinal mm -hmm. cord will go into neurology mm -hmm. or neurosurgery or as Dr. Downs uh, allude to, there is a higher level of chiro like chiropractic graduate practice and took another two years of functional neurology, mm -hmm. then they can do a little rehab to help him live a better life. Okay, and the second quick one. Okay. What is the lower age me limit where you can subject you know, the, someone the to chiropractic? What's the law? Lower age limit. Age. The age, age. age, what, the age yeah, limit? Yeah. The age limit of chiropractic, everybody have a spine need chiropractic. I mean, you, can you subject <coughs> a, a, a one week old? If I am, yeah. if I am having a perfect clinic, I would like people, I'd like to do high school screening to see if there's anything we can do so they don't develop problems or scoliosis or if they develop something, we can catch it early. I would like everybody that is 16, 17, to look at his spine at least maybe once or twice a year. And of course, anybody that is in pain or needs care that, that, that could be help or chiropractic, he also need to be there. But sometimes chiropractic is not the answer. Sometimes medicine is the answer, pharmacy is the answer, or physical therapy is the answer. We don't have all the answers. And just so you know, there is a specialty of pediatrics in chiropractic and they take care of people from birth. Now, they wouldn't do what I did to Sila, but children that have chronic uh, colic, cry all the time, can't sleep, have a problem nursing, any of those things, if it is from the nervous system, there's a whole subspecialty, thousands of hours that chiropractors study to be able to, to deal with that. Um, very gentle, and sometimes it is uh, physical congenital anomaly, and some of it is just nerve interference because getting out of the factory isn't easy, right? You have to go down a tube, and either somebody's pulling you, and as they pull, they decide which way they want to turn the head, but they're not really sure where the front and back is, right? Or through surgical intervention, which again is a very traumatic effect for the fetus. So from a chiropractic point of view, as long as they have, an, as Dr. Hussein said, if they came with a spine and they came with a nervous system, chiropractic can help them, okay? Thank you so much, we can clap. <laughs> they have done more than a public lecture. And uh, for the next few hours, they'll still be around with us during this week. Please engage with them, interact with them, get more information. And um, at this time, I want to invite the, the DVC to come and do something before uh, we, we get our director to give us the next direction. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, just to recognize somebody, uh, and to tell you that this chiropractic Chiropractic is not something of today. I had a very bad accident in 1989. And when I joined Moi University, I was recommended to see a chiropractor. And I saw one in Nairobi, it was called Dr. Josiah. And my back became very good for a very long time. But I'm not going to tell you how it is now, because there are several things that can always complicate things. But chiropractor really helped me. He was called Dr. Josiah and uh, was in this next to Nairobi Hospital there. He had a clinic there for chiropractic and it is something you can try. Allow me just to recognize uh, some of our friends who are with us here. Patrick Sang. Just stand up. <laughs> yeah. Patrick Sang 
is a silver was a silver medalist but currently Patrick just come next to me you are not going to talk currently Patrick Sang is the coach of Eliud Kipchoge and uh, I'm sure you know Eliud Kipchoge isn't it and these are the people that we are going to collaborate with he has a lot of experience a very good coach who has beaten the whole world just say hello uh it's almost evening, so I would say good evening. Uh, I want to wish this university uh, 10th uh, birthday. Uh, I think we are in the mood of celebration. And that's why we have all the people, Dr. Jones, Dr. Hussein, coming all the way to build a good linkage. Um, I'm a practitioner uh, that uses science to do my job. Coaching is science-based, athlete-centered, um, coach-driven. So now that it's coming closer to home, I think we are going to be the major beneficiaries. Thank you, and we pray that it works. Thank you. Thank you very much. He was a medalist in 1991, 1992, and 1993. He's also the trainer for Faith Keep Ye Go. Faith Keep Ye Gone. I think you know about Faith Keep Ye Gone. Which race did he? Oh, no, you oh, won't know that. But <laughs> it was a champion, I mean, a world champion, 1,500 meters. Eh? So thank you so much, my brother, for the work you are doing. Actually, you are changing my brain before I die. You know, when we were in Maseno school, we believed that it's soccer people who knows science that when they want to score, they kick the ball at an angle, and they have to calculate the tangent at which when it gets there, somebody will. And we said runners were running for nothing. They didn't know. <laughs> but now we are realizing that there's a lot of science, isn't it? So we thank God for us. As we wind up, vote of thanks, Director, uh, Research and Innovation. Thank you so much. Uh, before we wind up, maybe we'd like to do something else and just appreciate our guests today. Listen kindly. <laughs> so we are going to just appreciate you with some of our merchandise. Branded. I think I'm going to Okay, so we are going to give out three gifts today. We are going to give one to Dr. John Downs. We appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. Hussein. Yes, thank you so much. And we have one for the president of Life University, Dr. Scott. He's not, is he here? Yes. And the director of admissions. Of admissions. Those ones are in absentia. And then we have one for Dr. Kandie, who is a former student of Life University, and is also working on this um, collaboration. So thank you very much. So today I just want to appreciate our visitors. Thank you so much for being here. I know most of us were shy of coming here, but I know we are going to practice privately to see whether our nervous system is balanced. So thank you so much for enlightening us. Our Vice Chancellor, thank you so much for making time today to be with us. We are really grateful for that. Our Deputy Vice Chancellors, I don't know how many are here. Thank you so much, DVC PRE. We are also very grateful, oh, okay, we are very grateful for our members of management who are here, senators, deans, directors, heads of departments, students, staff who have come here today to grace this occasion. We also want to thank those who are working behind the scenes. 
We want to thank our catering, our central services. Thank you so much. And also the members of this committee that have worked tirelessly. We really appreciate you. So um, before I sit down, I just want to say a few things. We, first of all, we are going to come here. We are going to take a group picture so that we can capture your image. I hope we have your permission. And then um, we are going to have tea. So we are going to have our guests <laughs> and our members of management. I think you can use this door and have your tea here. The rest of us are going to have tea through the other door. So thank you so much. So for tomorrow, 